The Skimmerless Nano water box is now four months old, so today I'll bring you up to speed with how the fish and corals are getting on, as well as all of the equipment changes I've made. And if it's your first time here and you want a weekly dose of reefing goodness, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out when I upload. We'll start by talking about the livestock then. Sadly, I lost the tiny one spot fox face I had. He was thin when I got him and just disappeared one day, so I'm going to assume he died of starvation. Apart from that, I still have three Springer's damsels who are all behaving, and a Scopas tang who spends his day nibbling at algae. He's only small for now, but they do grow into big chunky heifers, so he'll outgrow the tank in probably a year or so, at which point he'll have to find himself new accommodation. For cleanup crew, I started by buying around a dozen red leg hermits and a dozen troker snails. The snails wasted no time in getting to know each other and started banging immediately. So now I have snail rugrats everywhere. But that is very much a good thing and I welcome anything in my tank that eats algae. There is no such thing as too many snails. Speaking of vegetarians, I recently added this blue tuxedo urchin. Urchins are, for my money, the best algae eating cleanup crew available, and I always have one in my tank. As well as the functional inverts, I also have a few decorative inverts, like this porcelain anemone crab. Although if you look closer, you'll see that this is actually a malt from one of the crabs that shed its skin. And finally I have three cleaner shrimp who spend 99% of their time hiding under the rocks. But they do hoover up any leftover food, so I'll forgive them their shyness. But I guess the big question with this tank is, how am I getting on without a skimmer? And the answer is that things are going pretty well. I feel like the true live rock I'm using is a big part of that, and I'm finding more and more little filter feeders and beneficial hitchhikers in the rock as the months go on. And I don't seem to have any undesirable hitchhikers, so I'm pretty happy with the rock. I also do 10% weekly water changes without fail because I'm a good boy and my mama raised me right. I originally intended to set up automatic water changes for this tank, but it takes less than 10 minutes to drain 15 litres into this bucket, then fill it back up from my 100 litre saltwater vat. So I don't think auto water changes are necessary on this setup after all. I also have further filtration in the sump of course, by way of a Clarisy SK3000 and three Tunzi 8831 refugium lights. And they seem to be doing a very solid job on nutrients indeed. I feed a small pinch of pellet food once a day and my phosphate is currently 0.05 with nitrates at zero. In fact I've just started dosing liquid nitrate to try to bring that up. I'm using a new product called NIOS Nitrate Plus, which in theory feels like a good way of maintaining higher nitrate levels in my system. Although to be fair, it would probably be more sensible just to turn a couple of my refugium lights off. So far then, I have had no ugly stage and no algae outbreaks of note. I do have a small furry layer on the frag rack, but that's about it. And more good news is that coralline algae is starting to take hold on certain places like my powerheads. The growth of coralline algae is a good indicator that a tank might be ready to start supporting stony corals. And I have a few bits of Monte Antarta that are well settled and basing out nicely. I even have a few frags of beginner friendly Aquapora that seem to be doing okay. I've also moved my two Scollies into the water box because they look awesome top down. And seeing top down in the water box is easy because it's such a short tank. And I have a few Zoas that have been in here for around a month and seem to be doing well. Although this little bastard escaped from a frag plug and set up camp on my rockwork. But while things are okay with my corals, they are lacking a little colour for my liking. This Sunset Monty is a prime example. The red base is hardly visible and the green isn't very vivid. Now I put that down to low nitrates, so for now I'm feeding Red Sea Reef Energy Plus, which will hopefully avoid my corals starving. And I'll continue to do so until my nitrates are back up to around 5 parts per million. Although this tank is only a few months old, I've already started dosing calcium, alkalinity and magnesium. Now I've chosen Tropic Marin All for Reef because it's all in one bottle, so it's nice and easy. I'm adding 4 millilitres per day and I'm testing alkalinity daily with my Reef Factory KH Keeper. I'm aiming for around 7.5 dKH, which is exactly where it's at at the moment, but keeping it stable in such a junior tank is proving a little fiddly, so I'm grateful for the automatic testing. 
And finally, I want to tell you about my flow. I started out with two Jekot SOW15 powerheads, but I found them a bit noisy. This tank is in my home office, so I'm really sensitive to any noise whatsoever. And I've gone for two AI Nero 5s instead. I find they're silent at 40% or below, so that's when I have them set at during the day. And they ramp up to 100% for 2 hours at 9pm to get any detritus out of the water column so it can be removed by my filter roller. However, 2 Nero 5s at 40% isn't giving me enough flow given I'll be keeping SPS in this tank, so I'll be adding another 2 shortly to give me more power baby. Apart from that, the tank is more or less silent. I can't hear the return pump anymore, and the only thing that makes any noise is the fans on the Red Sea Reef lead. And even then, the fans are really quiet, and I only notice them when I'm concentrating on the tank. Now it's still early days with my first attempt at a bare bottom tank, but it seems to be going pretty well. If I can get my nitrates up without upsetting the balance in my tank, I feel confident that things will start to look even better and I hope to start filling it up with more and more spicy SPS frags in the coming months. I'll keep you updated with how things go, both good and bad, so if you enjoyed the video and want to see more, make sure you like and subscribe, and until next time, happy reefing.